All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I'm David Sadoff. I'm a librarian here at Moffitt Library, and we are joined by the Hudson Valley Alzheimer's Association for the second of our three-part series this, um, this spring on um, Alzheimer's disease and various ways to um, recognize some of the warning signs and also ways to um, live healthily to promote cognitive um, health and graceful aging. Uh, this presentation is going to be uh, given by Karen Pantel. Thank you much, uh, so much for joining us. And it will be uh, 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's disease, some of the, the factors that you might want to keep in mind uh, for early detection of Alzheimer's disease and some of the steps you can take to um, have that early detection, which is important for um, productive treatment. All right, thank you so much for joining us. And Karen, take it away. I'm gonna pin you so you're in the spotlight. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good snowy evening, everyone. Welcome to the 10 signs of Alzheimer's, the warning signs. This program is presented to you by the Alzheimer's Association. My name is Karen Pantel. I am a Hudson Valley Alzheimer's volunteer educator, community educator. And um, I, as a registered nurse and nursing educator, um, my connection to the disease was mainly as an observer, but believe me, it, it hurts as much as, as it might a family member. Um, this program is designed for people who want to learn more about the warning signs of Alzheimer's and other dementias, and those who've noticed memory or thinking changes in themselves or in others. Before we begin, please know that at um, the end of the program, you feel fully free and we will be asking you to, to ask any questions or concerns you might have. I believe that Janet, who is our coach, would be only too happy to take questions in a chat. David, do we have a chat? Yes, we do. So feel okay. free to put them in the chat. Right, so as we're moving along so that we can go through this in a, in a reasonable amount of time, um, try to use the chat if it's a question you just can't wait to ask. And otherwise we'll have you asking them at the end. Um, to get truly started, are you ready, Janet? Today, we're going to explore the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's. Our learning objectives will be to describe typical age-related memory thinking or behavior changing changes, recognizing the common warning signs of Alzheimer's and dementia, discussing tips for approaching someone about memory concerns, explaining the importance of early detection and benefits of diagnosis, and identifying possible tests and assessments for the diagnostic project. Name the resources available through the Alzheimer's Association, which is always there for you to answer your questions and provide guidance. Right now, throughout today's presentation, we'll periodically check in with the Garcias a fictitious family following along as Mary's daughters discuss their mother's memory changes and take action to find the cause. Please note that the Garcia's experience might be common, but it does not represent the exact experience for everyone as situations do vary from person to person. These are the Garcia's mom and her two daughters. Mary is a 73-year-old widow, and she lives alone. She's a retired teacher who has always meticulously cared for her home. Her daughter, Lydia, has recently been noticing laundry pile up and junk mail and old newspapers lying around the house. Lydia is the eldest of Mary's two daughters. She lives just a few miles away and visits her mother frequently. Patricia lives in another state. She works long hours and isn't able to visit her mother as often as she'd like. 
She communicates with Mary and Lydia frequently via phone and text messaging. Lydia is concerned about her mother's noticeable lack of, of tidiness and that she's continuously losing things. She reaches out to Patricia. Worried about mom, she keeps losing things and the house is a mess. Probably normal to get a little forgetful with age. It's someone like her, shall we worry? Let's reach out to our old neighbor, Dr. Salloway. As we get older, cognitive problems become more noticeable for almost everybody. And it can vary from person to person. Typically with age, people have trouble coming up with the word they want right when they want it. They have trouble remembering names and they don't think quite as quickly. What's more concerning or what might be the beginning of a memory problem is people have a lot of trouble coming up with words or names and it's happening more frequently and the words or names don't necessarily come to them later. And then they start misplacing things, but not just once in a while, because we all misplace things, but more often. And it begins to interfere day to day. That should be a warning sign for people that this might be the beginning of a memory problem. I would like to point out that although this is a fictional scenario, Dr. Stephen Salloway is truly in fact a real MD who's been recognized as a leading expert in aging. Alzheimer's disease and other memory disorders. Now let's get into the 10 warning signs. We're all here today to learn more about Alzheimer's and dementia and identify common warning signs of the disease. You may have heard the terms dementia and Alzheimer's used interchangeably. While they are related, there are significant differences between the two. Let's hear more about this from some dementia and association experts. First, the association's Dr. Heather Snyder is going to discuss what dementia is. Dementia is the umbrella term for an individual's changes in memory, thinking, or reasoning. There are many possible causes of dementia and Alzheimer's is the most common cause. Other causes of dementia are vascular dementia, which is marked by changes in the blood flow and the blood vessels in the brain. Dementia with Lewy bodies, identified by specific brain changes throughout the brain that include the buildup of a protein known as alpha-synuclein. And frontal temporal dementia, which is marked by brain cell loss in the front sections of the brain or the frontal lobe. Each type of dementia may have distinct characteristics to cause specific behaviors in the individual. But there is also some overlap in behaviors among the types of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, accounting for more than 80% of all cases. Next, we'll hear what the disease is and what it looks like in our brain. More than 100 years ago, Dr. Alice Alzheimer's described specific changes in the brain, what we call the formation of plaques and tangles. Now, Alzheimer's is a progressive brain disease that's marked by these key changes and is thought to impact memory, thinking, and behavior. The brain has three main parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. Each one plays a role in how the body functions. The cerebrum fills up most of your skull. It is part of the brain most involved in remembering, problem solving, thinking, and even feelings. There are about 100 billion nerve cells or neurons throughout the brain that transmit messages in order for us to create memories, feelings, and thoughts. Alzheimer's disease causes uh, nerve cells to die, which leads to the brain tissue loss, or what we call shrinkage and causes loss of function and communication between cells. These changes can cause the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, such as memory loss, problems with thinking, planning, behavioral issues, and even at the end stages, problems with swallowing. 
Lastly, we'll hear from another expert about the importance of recognizing the warning signs of Alzheimer's. It's important to know what the warning signs of Alzheimer's are and to be on the lookout. We know that we change over time and the warning signs of Alzheimer's can be warning signs of a number of things. But when you see those in yourself, or in someone you care about, it's important to check it out, to consult with a doctor, to find out what you're dealing with. As we heard, it's important to know what the warning signs are and to be on the lookout for these marked changes. The Alzheimer's Association, as a leader in this area, developed a list of 10 warning signs to help people understand the difference between normal aging and common signs of possible dementia. This list is intended to be a tool to help identify unusual changes in a person's memory, thinking, or behavior. It's important to note that this list does not constitute a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia. These are simply the most common examples of changes experienced. Individuals may experience one or more of these signs in different degrees. Let's explore each sign and what some typical age-related changes may be. One of the most common signs of Alzheimer's is forgetting recently learned information. Others include forgetting important dates and events, asking the same questions over and over, or increasingly relying on memory aids, reminder notes, or family members for tasks formally managed with ease. What's typical for age-related changes is, and we call this the ability to recall, sometimes forgetting names or appointments, but remembering them later. Being able to recall is very much a difference between dementia and um, simple age-related change. Some people may experience changes in their ability to, to develop and follow a plan or work with numbers, which may result in trouble finding, following a familiar recipe or keeping track of monthly bills or difficulty concentrating and taking much longer to complete tasks. Age-related changes, on the other hand, may relate to making occasional errors when managing finances or household bills. And one wonders if that isn't throughout life with stress and age relation. I was probably spending four to five times more time preparing for something than I did say five or 10 years ago uh, to, because of the, um, I would lose my thought, I'd lose my focus, I'd get anxious, I wouldn't get the sleep. I was thinking of this, that was in my sleep. I was thinking about what I was anxious about, which was I was trying to remember, which was I was trying to prepare, which I was trying to do. Uh, so it was a, it was a really a vicious circle of, uh, uh, so I was able to control it a lot um, so that people on the, wouldn't see things and, and, and not, there weren't things to be seen. It's what was, what was disturbing me was what effort I had to put into uh, to, to do the things I used to do more easily. Challenges in difficulty completing familiar tasks. People living with dementia commonly have difficulty completing daily tasks, such as driving to a familiar location, organizing a grocery list, or remembering the rules of a favorite game. Typical age-related change could mean occasionally needing help to use the settings on a microwave or to record a television show. Some people have difficulty uh, with math or with reading in a way that's unusual to them. And once again, this is a change in that person. So, for example, we all know somebody who was never able to balance their checkbook, right? So that wouldn't be a warning sign for them. But if somebody who always balanced their checkbook to the penny suddenly was paying bills the same bill over and over and not 
able to balance their finances, well, that would be a sign for them. Another sign, confusion with time or place. People living with Alzheimer's or other dementias can lose track of dates, seasons, and the passage of time. They have, may have trouble understanding something if it's not happening immediately or forget where they are or how they got there. Typically for an age-related change, would be getting confused about the day of the week, but figuring it out later. Another sign, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. For some people, having vision problems is a sign of dementia, which may lead to difficulty with balance, trouble reading, or problems judging distance and determining color or contrast, which may cause issues when driving. Typical age-related change, vision changes related to cataracts. Alzheimer's disease is not just a disease of memory. It can affect other things too. It can affect the way that we perceive what we see. So sometimes somebody in the early stages of Alzheimer's might go to the eye doctor because they're having trouble seeing. And in fact, their vision is just fine, but the way they're perceiving what they're seeing may be difficult. New problems with words or speaking and writing. People living with Alzheimer's may have trouble following or joining a conversation. They may stop in the middle of a conversation and have no idea how to continue. They may repeat themselves, struggle with vocabulary, or have trouble naming a familiar object or use the wrong name. Typically for age-related change, we sometimes have trouble just finding the right word. The other thing that I've increasingly been struggling with the words, um, which I've dealt with words my entire life, you know, as an avid reader, as a reporter, as a writer. Um, I, I struggle with them now. Number six, misplaced, number seven, misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace your steps. What are the possible signs when it's dementia related? A person living with Alzheimer's may put things in unusual places. For instance, you may find the car keys in the refrigerator. He or she may lose things and be unable to go back over their steps to find them or accuse others of stealing, which may occur more frequently over time. What's typical for age-related change? Misplacing things from time to time and then retracing to find them. Recall and retrace are very Some important. Some people for wonder normal. if, you know, if they lose their keys or their glasses or their purse, is that a sign of Alzheimer's? And one thing that I would say about that is for most of us, we might misplace something, but then if we retrace our steps, we can usually find it. We can usually remember. For a person with Alzheimer's, sometimes they're not able to retrace their steps. Sometimes that memory is just gone. And so when they do find their keys next to the phone because they got interrupted by a phone call when they were coming in, they set their keys down in an unusual space. So there they are next to the phone. If that happened to you or me, we'd probably remember, oh yeah, the phone was ringing when I came in the door. I put down my keys. The person with Alzheimer's might not remember. They might wonder who's moving their keys around because they never put their keys by the phone. So that's just a little bit of a difference in uh, the, some of the dynamics with losing things in Alzheimer's. Number eight, decreased or poor judgment. Possible signs with dementia would be people living with Alzheimer's may experience changes in judgment or decision making. They may use poor judgment when dealing with money. They may pay less attention to grooming or keeping themselves clean. Age-related change would be making a bad decision or mistake once in a while, like neglecting to change the oil in the car. 
the way I kept my house. I always, I wouldn't say I was OCD, but pretty close to it. And all of a sudden, everything was okay with me. It's like, oh, it's a pile, I'm tired. So my dining room table usually looked like it was someone's office, because I always would say I would do it tomorrow. And then my bedroom, as far as clothing, I would just put it in a corner, put it in a chair. And all of this is just, I wouldn't say it looked like um, I was a pet wreck, but really I was, because I never threw anything away. I always would say, I'll get to it, but I never did get to it. So just the way of my standard of living, it was actually decreasing. Withdraw from work or social activities. As we age, it's normal to feel uninterested by family or social engagement sometimes. That's totally age-related change. It's also normal for many people who experience that feeling at times. However, someone who's experiencing demented-related changes may start to lose their ability to hold or follow a conversation, and as a result, begin withdrawing from social encounters or hobbies. They may lose confidence to get engage in any way. They have trouble keeping up with a favorite team or activities. We withdraw when we aren't comfortable. And um, this is really a sad part of dementia. One of the most common changes and early on is the person's comfort zone shrinks a little bit and then that gets worse throughout the course of the illness. So they're less comfortable going out, they're less motivated to do things than they were in the past. So there's some change in day-to-day -day functioning that way. I think they people also lose confidence in their cognitive abilities because they may not recognize someone or know their name or find the right word and they'll feel awkward and they don't want people to notice that so they feel more comfortable at home or in situations with family where they're very, very comfortable with that wouldn't concern them. So people tend to withdraw a little bit and be less uh, outgoing. That's one of, can be one of the early signs of Alzheimer's. Finally, number 10, changes in mood and personality. People living with dementia may experience mood and personality changes, such as becoming confused, suspicious, depressed, fearful, or anxious. Sometimes they get easily upset at home with friends or when out of their comfort zone. Typically, age-related changes would be people that have specific ways of doing things and they become irritable when a routine is disrupted. For instance, sometimes if their children come to help them clean up their house, get rid of things that they aren't using anymore, this can irritate people who it's just an age-related change. And it can also really upset people who um, have early dementia. Another early sign are of Alzheimer's or dementia is subtle changes in behavior. So all of a sudden, the uh, family may notice the person is more easily irritated or more impatient or a little moody, or have a shorter fuse, or more anxious. Now, there's lots of things that can cause that, but often that can be an early symptom of Alzheimer's or go along with the early symptoms of memory loss. Now let's check in with the Garcias again. As we talked about earlier, Mary's daughters are concerned about the changes they're observing in their mom they want to know when it's time to see a doctor about the changes they've witnessed. Let's take a look at their conversation. Did you look at the warning signs info I sent? I did, but still don't know. Mom's showing a couple signs, but not all the time. How do we know if it's serious enough to see a doctor? Let's check with Dr. Salloway. Memory is not all or none, especially when there are early symptoms or signs. So on a good day, people might function very well and not really even, no one notices there's a memory problem. 
But on other days, uh, especially if they're tired, then if things become more noticeable. So memory is variable. It's not all or none. And then there are different type of symptoms that develop um, for each person. So some people may have trouble with language, may have trouble with organizing themselves, may have trouble navigating while driving, and other people don't have the same symptoms. So you don't have to have every symptom of Alzheimer's to be concerned. And I think the most important thing is determining what has changed from that person's normal level of functioning. And usually people have a pretty keen sense of you know what they can normally do well. And then when they, either they or the family notice that there has been some change from that usual pattern of functioning, that should be a warning sign to people. But they don't have to check up all the boxes. Dr. Galloway gave us a great recap. It's important to remember that these warning signs are intended to be a guide to help identify problems in memory, thinking, or behavior that may be related to Alzheimer's or another dementia. Individuals may experience one, all, or some of these signs in varying degrees, and in numerous or single occurrences. They do not have to experience them all for there to be concern. It's important to discuss any changes in memory, thinking, or behavior in either yourself or someone else with a doctor. Our next topic will be early detection. It's a key that we pay attention to what's going on with our cognitive health and not dismiss any changes in ourselves or others around us as normal aging. Any change that's unusual for your level of functioning or that of someone around you is cause for concern. Many times, friends and family are the first to notice changes in someone's memory, behavior, or other abilities. In this module, we'll discuss why it's critical to address any observed changes early and seek answers from a medical professional. Sometimes the person exhibiting the symptoms isn't aware or may not have the insight to know that they're experiencing changes, which is why having an outside perspective is critical. This is especially important for individuals who live alone or are far from family and friends. Let's listen to Dr. Salloway as he discusses this and then hear from a care partner who was the first to notice changes in her husband. You know, it's a very interesting phenomenon that people who have memory problems are often less aware of it than family members or their friends who know them well. One of the reasons for that is our ability to monitor ourselves, which is an important part of brain function, decreases when we start having memory problems. Not in everybody, but commonly, and more than half the people with memory problems. And so the person is just not keeping track of the trouble they're having day to day. But the family members are, you know, paying attention, if they're paying attention, they see, boy, this is starting to happen a lot. And the person's not aware of it. So the family's more aware and they may talk to their loved one about it. And they say, you know, I've noticed you've been repeating yourself. And they say, I'm not repeating myself. And that could either be due to the fact that they're not aware of it, or they may not want to acknowledge it. I was all adamant about what was happening to um, Daryl. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. And I, this wasn't the person that I know. This wasn't um, the person. Daryl was very, my husband was very, um, he always had to be building or designing or working with his hands. And it was getting to the point where he wasn't, and he was becoming very frustrated when he was forgetting to do things or go places. What did Mary notice? What should you do if you notice changes in someone? If you continue to observe these changes, it's critical that you plan to take the next step and have a conversation with the person or others close to them about what you've noticed. 
This can be difficult and uncomfortable and these conversations must be had. The Alzheimer's Association has developed a roadmap of 10 helpful steps to help make addressing memory concerns less daunting and more productive. Let's take a look. Start by assessing the situation. Step one. What changes in memory, thinking, or behavior do you see? What is the person doing or not doing that's causing concern? Next step, what else is going on? Various conditions can cause changes in memory, thinking, and behavior. Are there other health or lifestyle issues that could be contributing to these changes, such as stress, medication, a disease like diabetes, check out the whole thing. Number three, learn about the signs and benefits of early diagnosis. You've already taken the very important first step by joining us for this program to learn about these topics. Do you notice any of these signs in the person you're concerned about? Has anyone else noticed the changes you've observed? Talk with friends and family. What, if any, changes have they noticed? Hold a conversation. This takes preparation. Who should have the conversation to discuss your concerns or the concerns? If it, if it could be you, a trusted family member, a friend, or a combination. It's usually best to speak one-on-one -on -one so that the person doesn't feel threatened or ambushed, but use what you know about the person to judge what approach might work best. Next step. When and where should the conversation be held? It's important to have the conversation as soon as possible. In addition to identifying a date and time, you should also consider where the person will feel most comfortable. What will you or the person having the conversation say? You may want to build out somewhat of a script. Consider the following questions. I've noticed a change in you and I'm concerned. Have you noticed this? Are you worried? Have you been feeling, how have you been feeling lately? You haven't seemed like yourself. I noticed you did such and such, and it worried me. Has anything else like that happened? Offer to go with the person to the doctor. Ask the person to see a doctor and offer to accompany them. Try using encouraging words such as, there are lots of things that could be causing this. Let's see if the doctor can help us figure out what's going on or the sooner we know what's causing these problems, the sooner we can address it. Or I think it would give us both peace of mind if we talked to the doctor. If needed, have multiple conversations. Don't be discouraged if the first conversation is not as successful as you'd hoped. Write down notes about how it went so that you can prepare for any future conversations. Don't dismiss the changes you're noticing simply because the person is reluctant to address them or the conversation didn't go as planned. Reach out for support. You can turn to the Alzheimer's Association. They're there 24 seven. You can call our free helpline 24 seven to talk with a master's level clinician who can provide reliable support and information, including about how to have this important conversation. See a doctor. Most people address concerns about memory, thinking, or behavior with their primary care physician. However, in some cases, the primary care physician 
will refer the person to see a specialist for further evaluations. Specialists may include ger a geriatrician, a neurologist, a neuropsychologist, a psychiatrist, or a psychologist. Next slide. We now know what the signs to look for are and how to approach the conversation, difficult, difficult as it may be. Now let's discuss the benefits of early detection. There are a number of benefits in early detection of Alzheimer's. For one thing, a person is able to have a voice in what happens next. They can make plans. They can live life more on their own terms. They can also make plans for the future, financial plans, care plans. They can let people know what they want, which can be a real gift later on. It also allows time for families to make plans and to dis make decisions about who can do what and, and figure out care and, and those kinds of issues. Some people are interested in clinical trials. Clinical trials allow people to have access to treatments that aren't available yet. And for some people, that can be a really important thing to pursue. Pay attention to any changes in memory, thinking, or behavior that you notice in people. If you see changes that are unusual for the person, take action by having a conversation. Another important thing to remember is, as much as possible, keep the person involved in what's going on. This is their life, and you have to respect that. So remember to keep them as part of the action, not simply the respondent. Discussing these types of concerns can be difficult. So consider using the 10 steps to approach memory concerns as a guide. There are a number of benefits to early detection, including the opportunity to plan for the future, explore treatment options, and participate in clinical trials and studies. Now let's take a look at what may be involved in the medical process to determine the cause of symptoms. Let's start by testing your knowledge. Test your knowledge. Who here thinks that there is currently no way to diagnose Alzheimer's disease or dementia. I see all those hands up and the answer is false. Contrary to an outdated belief that an Alzheimer's diagnosis can only be made at autopsy, there are a number of assessments and tests that make it possible for healthcare professionals to diagnose Alzheimer's and other dementias with a high degree of certainty. However, Determining the cause of dementia can sometimes be more difficult. Here we're going to explore possible steps of the diagnostic process. Keep in mind that as we review these steps, not everyone may be asked to undergo each one by their doctor. Assessments may include a medical history, a physical exam, a screening for depression, an interview with close companions, and tests may include lab tests, mental cognitive status tests, brain imaging, and even cerebral spinal fluid analysis. Mary's daughters are preparing for answers about their mom's changes in behavior. They wonder, do dementia-like symptoms always result in a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or another dementia? A 
appointments have been going well. Mom's handling them okay. Think it's really dementia? Guess we won't know until we get a diagnosis, but let's ask Dr. Salloway if it could be possibly something else. Someone could have uh, high blood pressure that's out of control, or they might have a thyroid condition that's not regulated, or diabetes that's not right, or, not, or on a medication that actually can cause memory loss. Drinking too much alcohol can make memory worse. So there are a lot of factors that go into cognitive difficulty with aging that some of them can be remedied. And so we want to do everything we can to improve uh, cognitive ability and quality of life. Let's have a recap of diagnosis seeking. The diagnostic process will vary from person to person, depending upon an individual's specific situation and what the doctor feels is the right course of action for that person. The diagnosis may be something other than Alzheimer's or another dementia, which is why it's so very important to investigate the cause of the symptoms. Stigma and misconceptions about Alzheimer's, like nothing can be done, can deter people from seeking a diagnosis very, very often. Getting information and support is also a critical next step. Now let's learn a little more about what the Alzheimer's Association offers. So if the diagnosis is Alzheimer's, what's next? Let's see what married daughters, Lydia and Patricia do. I called, but got your voicemail. How did it go? Call you later when I get home, but the diagnosis is early stage Alzheimer's. Oh no, what do we do now? Doc said the Alzheimer's Association offers free resources. Some even help people live well with the disease. We'll call soon, but left office with some hope. The Alzheimer's Association is in communities across the country, providing direct service to individuals and families facing the disease. The Alzheimer's Association. About the Alzheimer's Association, our mission is the Alzheimer's Association leads the way to end Alzheimer's and all other dementia by accelerating global research, driving risk reduction and early detection and maximizing quality care and support. Our vision is a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. The association is available whenever and wherever you need reliable information and support. Three of our key resources that, connect, that can connect you to information and support include, first, our free 24 seven helpline. Call us at 800-272-3900 anytime, day or night to receive information and support. Online, click into the owls.org. This provides access to highly trained and knowledgeable staff who can help with education, decision-making, crisis support, as well as using the telephone number. Um, often the first stop for individuals following a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or other dementia is to go online. This includes sections specifically for people living with the disease and caregivers. We'll hear from Teresa, who is living with Alzheimer's, about what questions she had and the information she found on owls.org. When I went to the Alzheimer's Association website, which is alz.org, there I was trying to find out more about what 
who's Alzheimer's? What really is this disease? What is younger onset Alzheimer's? What is dementia? Is there a cure? How long has this been? How many people are affected by this? Where can I go for resources? Where can I go for help? What do I do with this? How can I handle this? Is there more people like me out there? Is there someone that I can talk to if I need to? And there I found the support line is 24 hours a day. And there I found where I can go for workshops, where I can go and read things and post things that people have done, where I can find out what events is happening in the Alzheimer's Association, where I can see how it's affecting people around the globe. An Alzheimer's Association, AARP, Community Resource Finder, there is a wealth of community-based resources available in your area, including long-term care and community-based services, local association offices and their offerings of programs and support services. Visit alz.org slash DRF for this vital component. Tom, who is living with dementia with Lewy bodies, shares his experiences seeking help from the association to find local resources. Since I've been diagnosed with dementia, the one place that I know I can go to um, for assistance and help and support is to the Alzheimer's Association. There are people there that I know by name that I can contact if I'm having a difficult time or if I'm struggling to find some resource that they will provide that to me. Now, let's share some ways to join the fight. Now that we've taken a basic look at Alzheimer's disease and what resources are available, let's talk about how you can take action. You can volunteer. Whether you can spare a few hours a week or make a more significant time commitment, consider volunteering with the Alzheimer's Association. Numerous opportunities are available, including becoming a community educator or joining your local walk planning committee. Visit alz.org slash volunteer to learn more. Advocacy. Become an Alzheimer's Association advocate and speak out on behalf of the needs and rights of those facing Alzheimer's disease. Visit alzimpact.org. Trial match. Everyone can help advance Alzheimer's research by participating in clinical trials. Get started with Alzheimer's Association Trial Match, a free, easy to use clinical studies matching service. Visit alz.org slash trial match. Finally, the walk, one, one of the finals is the walk to end Alzheimer's. Form or join a team for the Alzheimer's Association walk to end Alzheimer's. These go on in all communities across the country, and we have several in our Hudson Valley area as well. Um, the walk is, is designed to raise critical funds and awareness, and it's held annually in more than 600 communities nationwide. Walk to End Alzheimer's is the world's largest fundraiser for Alzheimer's care, support, and research. Visit alz.org slash walk. Finally, the longest day. On the longest day, a day with the most light, the summer solstice, raise funds and awareness for the care, support, and research efforts of the Alzheimer's Association through an activity of your choice. Start now. Select your activity at alz.org slash the longest day. That concludes the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's presentation. Are there any questions? Was there anything we covered that you were unclear about? What information did you find most valuable? Is there anything you'd like to learn more about? We're open for your questions. Thank you so much, Karen. That was fantastic. I'm gonna oh, go I ahead wish. and turn <laughs> off the recording now. So, um, uh,
if people feel more comfortable to ask their questions without a recording.